Alright, well this is Tyler Nail, driving down the highway, headed to Lexington, Kentucky. Back a few months ago, I recorded an episode of a, of a, spin, of a, of a bonus episode for Red House called Red House Road Show. It was when I went and played Ted's in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I haven't pushed that out, because I, I, I haven't put that one out because I didn't feel confident about it for some reason it was kind of I don't know I don't think I don't I didn't really have a clear idea of what it was for and I don't have a clear idea what this is for either necessarily but still I'm gonna do it I remember I think what I think as I've been sitting here this morning working through this whole thing I've been aware of some of the ways I felt and I just want to express them and admit them kind of let them be a reality I guess I've been scared man I've been like so I'm, I'm driving to Kentucky right now by myself and I remember maybe a year and a half ago it was my I went on my first trip by myself as a solo artist to play the Tin Pan in Richmond Virginia and I was scared, you know, like I was, it's, when I started doing this heavily, I had my best friends with me and we were out all the time doing this and I had backup and I was never alone, had people to talk to. Even my most recent shows, I've had my new bandmates with me and been able to have people to talk to it takes some nerve to go out here and do this stuff by yourself I feel like especially there's like the world it can be a scary place you know and then things go wrong when I went down to play Ted's as soon as I got on the highway my tire exploded and you know that that put a flavor on that trip of like, well, now I'm on guard all the time. Is something going to happen? Today, heading to Lexington, I get on 77, two hours from home, four hours from my destination, and a spark plug goes out in my Jeep, and I can't keep driving it. Check engine light's freaking out, Jeep's freaking out. Stuff goes wrong, and then you got to kind of figure it out by yourself, and i got to call my buddy and call my stepdad and be like, how do I, what do I do? You know how what what what's it going to take to fix this? And it's on me to do it. And it's a bit lonely, you know. But when I was getting ready to leave this morning, I was listening to stuff about adventure, you know. These people who live in vans, these people who want to go camping all the time or just want to travel the world. I'm trying to, like, appreciate that it's all about an adventure. And when I'm out here by myself, even when I'm talking to this little device, like, when I'm out here by myself, things are different. I'm so observant. I look at every hilltop, every mountaintop. Every deer, every cow, every pie. I'm up here in, in southern, yeah, middle Virginia, western Virginia, I should say. And there's a bunch of uh, pumpkin fields, and I love it. Um, big scary highway, beautiful mountains. It's an adventure, and that's what I've been trying to tell myself more. To like lean into that stuff. To let it be an adventure. Let it be enjoy the unexpected and I do I feel different about it when I went to Richmond I think I started this story and didn't finish it but when I went to Richmond you know a year and a half ago I was a nervous wreck the entire trip like I was so afraid 
and uh, I went and played the show and I talked to my old bandmates while I was out there and just kind of acknowledged that I, I felt so fucking weird being out there by myself. I got home the next day or two later and my body was just so stressed. My, my muscles were all just stressed. I ate dinner that night, had some drinks, went to sleep. Woke up in the middle of the night, just sick and uh, being sick. I guess because I was just so nervous and stressed. My body just rejected food. I hardly ate anything the whole trip. I could hardly stand it. Today I was feeling super relaxed, kind of trying to lean into the adventure. And then when this spark plug thing happened, now I, my arms are tense. I can feel that I'm more stressed than I was, but I'm trying to let go of that. That's kind of why I picked this recorder up and started this now to uh, get myself back in this state of mind that is excited to be here because I am. I'm in Virginia. I love Virginia. I consider Virginia my home away from home. I'm headed to Kentucky. I haven't ever played in Kentucky before playing a radio show called Red Barn Radio, very in in the Red House family. I'm looking forward to meeting these guys. Um, I'm excited to be on the highway, you know. I've been writing about it a lot, about how much I miss these trips. And it's not the same by myself. I miss my friends. But I am glad to be here. And while I'm glad to be here, I also... I struggle with these other thoughts, too, of convincing myself not to enjoy being here. Um, there's all these things. There's these things that try to keep you home. And some of them are worth it. Right now, my grandfather, is he turned 90 this week. And he's really on his last legs. He'd probably leave this world before I know it. And I miss him already. I miss who he was 30 years ago and when I see my mom or a family member call me I wonder if uh, if it's to do with him and I wonder if I should be at home instead of trying to pursue this thing and then I got an uncle who I'm very close with and he's in South Carolina right now, and he, too, is deteriorating. And I wonder sometimes why, why is it so easy to schedule a trip to go six hours away to play in Kentucky? And it's not as easy to drive two and a half hours or whatever to go see my uncle. And it's probably more like five hours or something. And I should, and I will. I plan on going there when I get back from this trip to see him and to see my cousin. You know, tragedy's always a part of life. And when I when I taped my when I taped the other road show episode, I remember some shit going on in the news. It might have been a really bad mass shooting or something that was pretty significant to the culture and I remember talking about it in that thing asking myself like what the hell like what does it mean to be doing this feeling the need to promote myself and my art while all this tragedy happens in the world constantly like what the fuck is this and I don't think I have a perfect answer but I think I mean there is no time when the world there, there's no time that we will reach that the world will be void of tragedy it's always going to be present and these moments like this for me my adventure for myself is something I owe to myself something that everybody owes to themselves despite tragedy despite all those things that make you afraid of the world Despite all those times you wonder if it's worth doing. It seems like it's the adventure. It's the it's the making the most of the little amount of time you have in the world. 
you know, that pushes you to do it. I mean, my like I say, I've got family members that their adventure, their time may be ending soon. And I would imagine, of course, like, what? of course we want to see each other. I want to see them, and they probably want to see me. And still acknowledging that, I'm sure if they were in their right mind and speaking, they would tell me, hey, what I want for you is to, like, make the most of your life. And that's what I'm trying to learn how to do. I'm not good at this anymore, man. When I was... In my 20s, it was like there was nothing else. And now, it's so hard for some reason. And, like, a lot of my peers are married. A lot of my peers are settled down and having kids. And my family members all come over and they've got... They're settled down and they've got kids. And they have these careers that are kind of normal. And they kind of look at me as if I'm, you know, one of my cousins said something to me once about how he thought I'd given up this dream of music or whatever. He said it judgmentally and harshly and cruelly. And sometimes I wonder what the fuck, like, if my priorities are wrong. I tell myself all sorts of things. Tell myself... Tell myself that because of the tragedy in the world that this isn't worth doing. Or because... It's time to grow up. It's time to get a career and settle down and, you know, make a hundred thousand a year. I tell myself that to talk myself out of doing these trips. Or I tell myself, you know, there's more important things in the world or that music is a young man's game or the industry is so different now that it's pointless. That now it's just a game of TikTok and YouTube and it's not even music anymore. I tell myself be cynical, you know, people who pretend to be other people or put on fake accents or pretend they're from somewhere else or pretend they're some kind of sideshow act, like those are the people succeeding, dudes in regular clothes who sing songs about their grandparents aren't succeeding in this world and you should hang it up or or lower your standards, lower your, let's say, expectations rather than standards tell myself all sorts of things to try to convince myself that this adventure isn't worth living out that this like these steps these risks these shows where I'm I'm just paying my gas and paying $50 to change some spark plugs and I'll go home with no money and maybe a couple new Instagram followers or whatever but it's worth it I'm driving through mountains not driving through like oh look at that mountain beside me I'm, I'm right now entering into a tunnel going underneath a mountain surrounded by thousands of people constantly on the highway going somewhere all going different places all of them wanting something to happen all of them trying to make money I'm in the world Seems like it's better to be in the world trying to do what you're trying to do instead of just sitting at home telling yourself to be cynical about the things you want to do. Fuck it. Go do them. Go do the shit you want to do, you know? That's what I'm trying to tell myself that it's okay to do. I want a family, want a house, want a retirement plan, but... This is unfinished still. I get the sense the world don't give a fuck what I'm doing. and Even people who give a fuck what I'm doing are tired of interacting with it. It feels like sometimes. And I don't fucking know what to do with all that. But nose to the grindstone, as they say. I guess I got, I feel like I got no choice but to come out here and do this. fix the car keep rolling I don't know bro I'm gonna leave it there for now I'll check in later alright I'm back on the West Virginia Turnpike Um, 
Yeah, so I made it to Kentucky after all the car troubles. Lexington, Kentucky. I wish I had pulled in, I wish I had recorded my reaction when I pulled in. Such a cool place. The, uh, the architecture and the culture of the city. I have a, I work with a guy that is from there and he talks about it like it's probably the same way I talk about Winston, honestly. Uh, talks about it like it's just, he's so not impressed with it, but, and it's not like it's some big ass city, it's not like it's Chicago, but it's a cool little city. And the houses uh, in particular just really stand out, the architecture of the houses. So. I played Red Barn Radio last night, and it went really well. It was fun. The owner was very cool, or you know, not the owner, but one of the one of the producers and the host. And uh, as we were talking, he kind of asked me like awkward question, "Where are you staying tonight?" I said, "Yeah." You had mentioned uh, Airbnb, but you and I really never followed back up with each other, and so I'm, I don't know where I'm staying. And he said, well, you can just stay on my couch if you want. So I performed the songs, I streamed live, and more songs will go up later. And it was really fun. And then uh, I followed the producer or the host to his place, and we set up talking for about another hour and a half before crashing out met his beagle and his cats and uh, he told me about so I asked him just kind of like what it was like because Red Barn Radio has had Tyler Childers Sturgill Simpson and Sierra Farrell on the show I think all of them before they were blown up and I just asked him like hey what is your impression of these people before they come up like can you tell that they're on the come up can you tell that they're about to blow or is it what is that it like running into these people and he said he honestly said he just told me the story of interacting with these people and he said uh when the first time tyler came around they were doing they were still doing live shows and uh Tyler really only pulled like a hundred people. It was just before he was, before he had popped. And uh, he said Tyler was kind of shy, kind of like distant and wasn't all that talkative until maybe the second time he did the show, which is interesting. And and those those episodes have millions of views. You know, Tyler took the YouTube channel, I think into the, into the, the, the world of large audiences. Sturgill, he said he got a demo of a band that was uh, whatever, drum heavy, kind of heavy rock band and so it was it was something weird, like somebody in a bar gave it to him or somebody somebody at a bar that he played at gave it to him and uh, he followed up and he said at the time they were doing pretty much exclusively bluegrass fiddle music, fiddle and banjo music on Red Barn so when Sturgill, going by a different name at the time, but when Sturgill connected and said he wanted to play or whatever, uh, they reached out and said, this is cool music, you got a great, awesome voice. Um, is there, would you be willing to do like a stripped down, unplugged version of this? And apparently Sturgill said, yeah, we can do that, no problem. And then he showed up and they brought in probably 150 people or something in there and just absolutely paid no mind to the unplugged agreement just played their played their asses off and uh played loud and proud which i thought was funny kind of sounded like sturgill um but he didn't really say that it was obvious he said he he knew he uh, saw the talent the talent was obvious in these guys but as far as being aware of some kind of movement happening in music or seeing that they were you know this following around them knowing about this following around them 
wasn't that evident, which I just thought was interesting. Because, you know, once these people blow, you just only see them as the the iconic figure that they are perceived to be. But, you know, they were at one point scrounging just like everybody else. They were just independent artists. I've, I've looked at Sierra's posts on there and like she looked all different she wasn't doing this hat stuff that she does all the fucking time now always wearing a hat she had dark hair she looked old-fashioned not retro not like in the way that she does now but she looked like she was from West Virginia um looked like a normal person and some of those videos I think of her on Red Barn have like 400 views or something which is crazy to think about now and now she's she's this whole other thing this non-human thing it seems Red Barn was a lot of fun I really enjoyed hanging out and hanging out with the cats and hanging out with uh, with the crew I'm very curious about Lexington while I was there there was a I was in a place called Lex Arts. I think it's like their arts place, their center for arts, cultural arts. And they had like a, a what? Art a hat exhibit, like an art exhibit by a hat maker. The hats were badass with these gigantic feathers, just ridiculous hats. Amazing. Uh, I need to remember to look that exhibit up so I can find out who the hat maker is, but yeah, really cool stuff, and uh, drawn. I, I really enjoyed Lexington. I want to go back up there, but goddamn West Virginia, man! I'm driving it right now. There's been snow up and down these mountains on this trip. God, these rivers and these square ass buildings built up on high ground. I just want to fucking drive around these states for a while. I just had this idea horrible idea obviously I mean people go out on the road for um, two months and say it's too much but I mean what if what if when I got home there's 50 states and there are 52 weeks in a year what if what if when I got home I planned what my dream my dream year on the road would be if I could just leave leave town January 1st spend a week spend a week in every state with a week off for Christmas and a week off for Thanksgiving something like that so you know start the year in whatever start the year first week of the year in like Virginia or go south actually so let's say South Carolina go to the beach or go to around and work your way south into the, and so every week, week one, go to South Carolina. Week two, go to Georgia. Week three, go to Florida. Week four, go to Alabama. Week five, go to Mississippi. You know, just spend a week, <laughs> a week, a week at a time in the state. And that will, and just play, you know, play three shows in each state. Stay somewhere all the time. Uh, you could do a van life thing, maybe, you know. You could travel that way. That'd be rough on a car, I'll bet, but... I don't know. It could be, it could be amazing. It could be an amazing adventure to try to pull off if you could just do it. I might try to do it. Who knows? Maybe I'll get that break. Um, but I have, I have loved driving around West Virginia up here. These black mountains. I need to remember some of this imagery. We got black rocks. We got winter. Oh, what was it called? Winter in Kentucky. I heard a song by After Jack called Springtime in Virginia. I think that's what it was called. I want to write one called Wintertime in Kentucky because the guys it kept saying when we realized it was snowing, the guys kept saying, man, winter in Kentucky sure is depressing. And uh, I don't know, boys, because... It's November, you're getting snow in Kentucky, and maybe you just miss the sunlight, but in North Carolina, it's depressing because you got all that cold and that dampness, but no snow. 
most of the time. So I don't know. I might would pick your way. Uh, black rocks, black mountains. Um, snowy Kentucky morning. Blue-eyed cat. brick wall horses Louisville vibes you know just fucking Americana as hell and then West Virginia highways John Denver had something figured out I tell you what god damn I'm a gopher now mm -hmm.